are making cherry bounce. And cherry bounce has a long history um, in food. You see references it during holiday mentions. George Washington has a famous recipe that has survived. And what it is is a cherry cordial. It's made with a mixture of brandy, morello, or um, sour cherries, sugar, spices, and a little bit of water. And you set it into a crock and you let it ferment for about three to six months. And about Christmas time, you would have a very nice cordial that you could share with your friends and family. Do you normally mash the cherries or do you just leave them whole? So the cherries we're going to use are whole. Uh -huh. These are just a dark sweet cherry that you can get at any store. If you can find Morello cherries in the summer, that's the best time to get this and get this started. But we're going we're gonna to do this for Christmas, so we're just going to do it today with some frozen cherries. What I've done is I have put a little bit of water in the pan, put the cherries in, about two to three cups of sugar, and then just let them come to a slow simmer. You don't want to boil them because it breaks the cherry flesh down. You want to just get them hot enough that the juices start going. And that's what we've done. So for modern recipes, you could use fresh or frozen. Mm -hmm. and yeah. You, you need to take the seeds out, though, correct? There will be no seeds unless you're using you're fresh. fresh. Okay. But um, the one I like the best is if you go look in the summer, there are often Morello cherries in a jar. And those are wonderful. We can get a couple of jars of those, and it has the liquid already in it, and the cherries are already pitted. Mm -hmm. So when you can find those, you can also use the canned sour, sour cherries. Those work really well, but they are quite expensive. So I found the Morellos at Aldi's sometime this summer, and that's a good good product to use, and that's what I made my mounts with. Is there a particular time of year that people would make this? They would make it in the late summer when the cherries were the ripest. So July, June, depending on the season, um, depending on the growing season. And you would basically just mix it all up into a large batch, and I mean they would take probably something like a half keg they would make this into. And Box, uh, mix it up, put it in the cellar, and let it sit for the next six months. Um, Can it sit longer than that? Sit as long as you like. I have aged some of my bounce for three or four years now. Oh, wow. Okay. And you can also make this with apples. Um, oh, apple really? Cider. Uh -huh. So cider, uh, apple bounce tastes a lot like apple pie. <laughs> uh, you would just use a fresh cider that you can buy at the grocery store. Throw some apple slices in there if you want, or just I just use the cider spices, rum, uh, brandy, whatever kind of alcohol you want. You could even use vodka. They weren't real picky on that because it was whatever was available. Um, the finer homes would have used brandy. The lesser homes may have used rum, like the middle class. Um, I've seen some that use whiskey. And some use whiskey as well. So again, whatever is available to you mm -hmm. in your area. You want to clean out your liquor cabinet, this is a good way to do it. You could even mix all three together. <laughs> I have done that. <laughs> Made a couple of batches of this over the years. And um, sadly, I don't even like bounce, but my friends do, so that's why well, I, I, like, I like I it. Like, yeah. yeah, Roxanne tasted it. Well, I think it's great. tasty. My husband likes it, so it's, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a winner in our house. So the spices we're going to use today, we have cinnamon sticks, some whole cloves. I peeled up a bit of orange. This is a mandarin, you can use Seville or whatever orange you have available. Um, and then I grated part of a nutmeg, and I'm going to leave the rest of the nutmeg whole to give it some body. And then we're just going to put this in with the cherries after we put the cherries and the alcohol into the demijohn that we're using. So it's a very simple recipe that we're doing. Uh, I've taken a large bottle of rum. We're going to use golden rum today, uh, which has a nice dark, uh, dark spicy flavor to it. You can use white rum. Some, some food bloggers have tested both, and some prefer the white rum, some prefer the dark rum. So it's really totally up to your taste, which is the nice thing about historical recipes. A lot of things were flavored to the taste of the family. Versus today, which actually I still do that. So <laughs> we're gonna put the, the rum in first. Actually, let's put the cherries in first. Okay. Roxanne, you are in charge. I am just, <laughs> I am just the Vanna White for today. There we go. That's perfect. So let's see if we can do this without making too much of a mess. Yeah, that's if and hitting Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, they're going everywhere. Are they? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, let's see. This pan is not our most classic. It's not pan. our friend. At home, this is a lot easier if you use something that has a spout. <laughs> you can do this in a mason jar, you can do this in a brewer's keg, uh, or brewer's bucket, which is what I do mine at home with. And that's just like those two gallon plastic buckets that you get. And we're using a demijohn that's a... Uh, 
Good thing we cleaned the table off. Yeah. And I'm just trying to get the cherries worked down into this. They're uh, they're clogging up. <laughs> Close my down like your other side. Yeah, we're gonna do the other side. We're gonna get nice and gooey. It's gonna be nice and gooey. This is not this messy when you do it at home. I promise. <laughs> And you can put this recipe together in you know, 15 minutes. It does not take long. Just store it somewhere that's nice and cool, like your basement or um, your refrigerator even. If you want to do this in mason jars, it just makes small matches. Just, um, you know, do about, I don't know, we did a 1.75 bottle of rum. I would just say half a mason jar with rum and then the rest with the cherries. And a little bit of sugar and water. You can also find a lot of sources online that tell you how to scale this down to more measurable, manageable quantities. We got some heavy drinkers in this house. So. <laughs> um, the nice thing about this is it also makes good Christmas holiday gifts. So if you wanted to do this, as, um, you could buy some little clear bottles and make this for friends and family, which is what I do. Okay, and if you want to give this a taste, we're laying right down to sugar and cherry juice. Tastes good. You want me to cook that down a little bit more? Because you're still still up. Okay. Let me do that. Oh man. <laughs> I didn't get it everywhere. <laughs> it's alright. We will clean. That's right. Okay. Alright, so now we got all the cherries in there. And so now we're gonna see if we can pour the rum in there without drowning in rusty and it. It's alright, we'll just wash off the cherry juice. Just a oh <laughs> yes. Walt. <laughs> Need your help. Roxanne's <laughs> rocking the kitchen again. <laughs> what we're going to do is just kind of smush it around, get it a little bit mixed up, and then we're going to put our spices in. And again, this is just a couple of cinnamon sticks, some orange peel. You can leave the spices out if you don't like the mulled wine flavor. Uh, some people do. I think the one rest recipe out there from Washington's. You want to use this? Yeah, we might need to use that again. Just put these little bits. Calls for no spices, but it's entirely up to you. That's the beauty of this recipe. So again, we're just going to swish it around. No. And mix it up really good at home. You can do this, like if you use mason jars or just a spoon. If you can't get a spoon in this one, we're just going to swish it. And this is pretty much the recipe. So we're just going to take a piece of cloth. Um, I'm going to just do a single layer because again, I want this to breathe. So could you use a cork? You could use a cork, but um, you may want to put a hole in the cork just to give it that little oh, air. Because otherwise it would mm -hmm. blow it off, right? It possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried it, so I, I do the aerator, so I haven't tried it. Well, I've made wine before and had you know, the top blow off because the gas is built yeah. up so much. So I would recommend, you know, they talk about using a bladder in recipes. Like okay, a pig's bladder? Yeah. So you could do that, which would have probably some natural aerated ability to it since it's tissue. So we've got some fake pig's bladder that we purchased from Townsend. Okay. And I wonder if that would work you probably as well. Could, yeah, you could do that. You could do a wax seal again, maybe just put a little hole in it if you mm -hmm. want to do something more authentic. But basically we're just going to let this sit for the next three months. Again, you can drink this right afterwards and yeah, give it a week or two if you want to drink it early. But the longer you let it sit, the better the sugars and all the, the spices uh, blend together and it more of a ferment. So it will get stronger with time. So with your bottle that you brought that you had, um, you know, a little bottle of it. So when you pour this off, do you pour it through like cheesecloth? Or... Uh, yeah, I would do it through a sieve or cheesecloth because you um, don't necessarily want to drink all the whole cloves and the cinnamon sticks, mm -hmm. but this will make it more refined and better for company because you don't want to give them a, a, a glass of you know gnarly looking. <laughs> Chunky. Chunky bits. Because <laughs> the cherries will break down a little bit, but they'll retain their wholeness. And then once you've drained this off into a clear bot, you know, into a clear liquid, you could take the cherries and you can use them in a pie or a jam. Ooh, that would be or good. you can put them on ice cream. You can still use the cherries. They don't disintegrate to the point where they're mush. They just um, they retain most of their shape, so they're still usable for Will this get moldy? If it's not clean, it could. Okay. Well, so whatever yeah. you're using, sterilize it first. You can use an iodine wash if it's the brewer's bucket. 
but just make sure anything that you put into this is clean because there's no heat source it's not going to kill any bacteria you know or you would think that the alcohol would sterilize the majority it of would keep most germs. of it out yeah um my aerator that i used in the batch it did get a little bit of mold in it, but it was not in the rest of the product, so I just dumped the aerator out. And it's that little plastic piece, and the aerator is a plastic piece about that long. It goes in the top of the brewer's bucket. You, when you go to, if you go to the brewer, uh, the hardware store, they'll tell you what that is. But yeah, I had a little bit of mold in it because I put water in that, not alcohol, and so it molded. But it didn't get into the rest of the batch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. All right. This was fun. I can't wait to. Try it after. <laughs> yeah, so give it about two months, at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. If you want to be bright, uh, be if you can't wait that long, but at least two months. Even you can brew this as long as you want. It does not have. It does not go bad. Like wine, it gets better with age. So all right, let it go. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy right today. Happy yes. Happy holidays from everybody. Yes. Happy Take holidays. Holiday. Merry Christmas and everything else. And uh, have you some self self some bounce this year. <laughs> Have yourself a very bouncy Christmas. That's right. <laughs>